you're finding it a little harder to equalize. That ever happen? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again on our latest edition of our in-depth preview, our in-depth teaser with me, Nico Luro, and over to my left here, the rock star, Michael Menduno. <laughs> Michael, how are we doing? Sir? Good morning. Good to see you. Yep. Great to see you too. Um, have you, I, I, as always, I imagine you've got some really cool diving stuff uh, for me. We to, have to, some to pretty unpack. cool stuff coming out. Yep. I, I think so anyway. Um, maybe we could start with a couple of questions. Oh, you're going to shame me as you always do. Fine. Bring uh, these, these, are, these, these are probably easy ones. These are experiential questions. So, okay. Uh, have you ever gone diving and uh, come up and then realize you got water in your ear that just doesn't seem to come out? For sure. Ever had that happen? Yeah. For sure. All right. Or uh, you go diving and you come out and your ears feel kind of muffled, like everything's sort of muffled. Again, maybe water in the ear or something. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Had that too. Okay. And no, how about know. after two or three days of diving, you just everything's getting really smooth and nice. However, you're finding it a little harder to equalize. That ever happened? Oh, when I used to work on the liverboards, all the time. That was yep. literally public enemy number one. You get back from a liverboard trip and you go back and you're leaving the same day as you come back with a whole new group of people and your ears are like, ah, you're not going to unblock, are you? Yeah, right. been there. Yep. That sucked. So we're going to talk about, we're going to come back and talk about what that is about and why those things, those three things are related and why they what happened to, to divers. Uh, you, so you've, uh, uh, you've, you've taken pity on me this month, I see. <laughs> <laughs> made it easy for you. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but we have some cool stuff in this issue. Uh, our lead is a feature called Annotated Techie which in some ways has been 30 years in the making. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been fascinated with just the amount of gear it takes to go explore underwater. You know, recreational diving takes a lot of gear, but tech diving especially takes it to a whole nother level. And so we, we, we teamed up with a British uh, photographer, the well-known famous Jason Brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gone to this feature called Annotated Tech. We basically look at... Uh, several popular configurations, both open circuit and closed circuit, and identify every piece of kit that divers are wearing. So, you know, wow. as you probably know, tech divers can easily go in the water, you know, kind of wearing uh, equipment <laughs> worth the value of a small split stop, right? For sure. <laughs> and, For uh, sure. Right? And each piece of equipment is broken, you know, is, is made up of 10 to hundreds of components. So we're, we're actually jumping in the water with this huge galaxy of uh, screws and nuts and bolts and tubes and hoses. And... So anyway, this, this feature celebrates our, uh, call it our uh, innate uh, gear headedness of techie. And uh, I, I think it's, it's pretty interesting. People will see the pictures and just kind of marvel at how many specific specialized pieces of kit we need to do that we need to do what we do so kind of a fun a fun feature sponsored by i gotta give a shout out to our sponsors dan europe uh dive soft fourth element halcyon and shearwater so uh help help, help make this feature possible so thank you very much to one of our sponsors yeah. as always yes so story number two it may we give a shout out to uh, deeperblue.com. Deeperblue.com is a, a media platform, of course. They have been around for 25 years. This is their 25th anniversary. And we decided to uh, give them a big shout out. I interviewed um, Deeper Blue's founder, uh, uh, Stephen Whelan, known as uh, Papa Smurf, with all the Deeper uh. Blue Smurfs. And uh, so we, we kind of talk about the Deeper Blue story. I was really interested to learn um, that back in the day, in the early days, uh, in the early uh, 1990s, when Stephen started Deep Blue, it was really sort of the, like my old magazine, Aquacore, it's really sort of the Aquacore of freediving. Mm -hmm. Freediving was just, competitive freediving was really just taking off. There wasn't really a hub, 
a community hub or good information. And so Deeper Blue served that purpose. They, they provided information, uh, curated information on free diving, which was hot at the time, and really became kind of a community hub. You had people right. like Tanya Streeter and, and Herbert Nish and uh, William Truebridge all wow, on yeah, yeah, yeah. forums. And this was before social media. So forums, computer forums, uh, online forums were really the social media of the time. So uh, anyway, so it's just a huge accomplishment to be in this business for 25 years straight. It's crazy. So, um, it's crazy. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, then uh, we uh, go to our geek piece. This hey. is a piece called Oxygen Exposure Management. Uh, it was written by uh, uh, Dick Van, uh, Dr. Richard Van, who was the uh, research director at Dan, Dan mm -hmm. World, and who's now deceased. He passed away a few years ago. He also ran the Rebreather Forum 3, you know, well, super well-known researcher, former SEAL team member, etc. Uh, anyway, so this piece is interesting. It was written back in the 1990s. And now, of course, we, you know, we've pretty much figured out our oxygen management. I mean, we we run our uh, partial pressure of oxygen, our PO2s, at 1.2 to 1.4 for the working portion of the dive, depending on which agency recommendations you follow and if you're on a rebreather or open circuit. Uh, and then we boost that up to uh, 1.4 to 1.6 for decompression. Uh, interestingly, looking across all the agencies, GUE is the most conservative. We run our PO2s at 1.2 and boost them up to 1.4 for decompression, maybe 1.6 at your six meter stop. Uh, the US, and, and we do that for open circuit and closed circuit. The US Navy has created a standard of running their PO2s at 1.3 for uh, closed circuit. Uh, and all the other training agencies are at 1.4 actually. So okay. 1.3 to 1.4, so kind of interesting. But this, this talks about the biochemistry, the kind of data at the time and Dick's recommendations to the tech community, which are really interesting and turn out pretty prescient. So uh, I think people enjoy reading, and particularly GUE readers will uh, yeah, enjoy right. reading that. So. Yeah, looking forward to that. So, yeah, so then we get to a little drama, uh, surviving an uncontrolled ascent. So the question is, what do you do when your power inflator sticks, you can't open it, and you can't reach your dump valve because your wing is overpressurized? So uh, this this was a question that uh, tech diver Marine Roberts uh, grappled with as she began to rapidly ascend to the surface from a, a 36 meter deep dive. So um, oh, yeah, and it tells her story. It's it's kind of a close call story. We've been talking about close calls and stuff like that, and uh, it's harrowing and pretty darn interesting to read. So uh, nice. and uh, in this case, it seemed like she did everything right once the thing occurred. But there was still yeah, sometimes it happens. And this is the case of that. So uh, anyway, yeah, interesting story, a good must read story. And then uh, for for instructors and teachers out there, we, we have a cool piece by Stratus Koss a Greek mm -hmm. cave instructor, author of uh, Close Calls, and it's called Choose Your Students Well, Less Teachers Hell Will Slowly Go By. Little little uh, shout out to, uh... to her. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so, you know, there's been a ton of articles on how to choose your instructor, right? I mean, that's kind of the classic, choose your instructor well. So Stratus sort of turns this on his head and share some of his experiences learning to select his students. So for example, he goes to the unabashed card collector. You know, don't, I'm not really interested in the class, but I want the card. So how, dealing with students like that. Um, uh, another example of a student who couldn't count to save his life, literally <laughs> kind of frightening, you know, and then other conflicts with students or the privileged professional. So this is, an instructor who's taking the class, not because they want to dive at that level, but because they can teach at a lower level. Right. So the, the privileged professional. So uh, Stratus goes through some pretty interesting stories of his own experience, learning learning how to say no to students uh, mm. when, when he needs to. So uh, it's a good piece, great piece, actually. Um, and then finally, we have a, a really good piece, a human factors piece from uh, Gareth Locke. 
mm. on, on why expert divers may not be the easiest people to learn from. Because once you're an expert, you kind of look at different facts and make decisions in different ways than you do as an intermediate or beginning diver. So uh, mm. quite an interesting piece. So Love yeah, that. yeah. So I'm that that's what we got going. Uh, and I probably have to answer some questions for you now. I mean, you need to tell me what do I do when my ears get all blocked? Right. So, so this is a very common occurrence. It's actually probably one of the most common uh, ear injuries that mm. divers get, but don't even know what to call. So uh, it's called baritidis media. And what happens is, as we go under pressure, of course, the external pressure pushes in on our eardrum, which sort of bends, and mm. then you equalize, and then it's all good again. But if you don't equalize often enough, or you wait till you need to equalize to equalize, what happens is that eardrum starts getting bent and bent, and your body decides, look, mate, you're just screwing up, you know, you're screwing me up. And so it uh, pushes fluid, blood, into the uh, the eardrum. And so it creates that full or stuffy feeling. Um, so the answer, and this is a piece by uh, Ted Hardy. Did I, did I, I don't even know if I said all the authors of all our pieces. Oh, well. You've said a uh, lot of them. I can tell you that. People have <laughs> definitely got their credit. <laughs> right. This is Ted Hardy, who's a, a performance freediving instructor, trainer, longtime freediver, former record holder, coach, et cetera. And uh, so he discusses this. And of course, the answer, kind of like our issue in last time, better equalization. The divers mm -hmm. need to be more aware of their equalization and not wait until you need to equalize to equalize. you got to keep, keep things going. So, um, yeah. So we'll be out this Thursday. I think it's a good issue. I think people will really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, there you go. And where can people find this, all this techie ah, goodness, ah, please, Michael? Ah. Well, <laughs> two places. You can go to indepth.blog or goe.com forward slash blog. So uh, we're there and uh, we'll be live and uh, hope you uh, click in and uh, check out the new issue. I'm sure people will, Michael, because they love the stuff that you put out. So, guys, thank you, as always, for joining us right here on the Global Underwater Explorers YouTube channel. Please, if you do like the video, please do like the video. Share the video with any other diver who you think may be interested. If you want to grab some of this sweet GUE winter swag that I'm representing right now, or if you're over in a sunny part of the world like my colleague <laughs> Michael is and you want to grab some summer swag, just head on over to GUE.com shop, just GUE.com shop. It's all there. Grab what you want. Um, we have got quite a lot of cool stuff coming out this month on the channel. We've got the we've got the first ever episode of the Careers of Diving video coming out. So we all know that we can be diving instructors. We all know that we can just be divers. But if you want to be a diving professional, you don't just have to be confined to diving instructor or diving instructor trainer or administrative person. There are so many different branches and different worlds that diving can take you to. And that's what we're going to be examining with this Careers of Diving series. It's going to be a, a monthly, maybe bi-monthly thing. We'll see how popular it is. So be on the lookout for that. And there's a lot of our regular content coming back too. I don't want to, you know, break the glass ceiling, but Dorota might be coming back on the channel very soon. Mm. So be on the lookout for that, guys. Everyone's favorite versus Monday might be coming back oh so very soon. But that is it for this edition. So please do check out the new uh, the new news in depth newsletter at in depth blog uh, or gwe.com forward slash blog. And that is all from me, Nico Lero, and the rock star over to my left, Mr. Michael Manduno. We'll see you next month. See you next month, everybody.